Hello everyone, I'm Farmer Sim. Welcome back to the Missouri River Bottom by River Bottom Customs. I hope you're all doing very well and having a nice day. So what's going on today down on the farm? Well, I've taken on a contract. It's a foraging contract because at the minute we are now at a position where all of our fields have been harvested. We've got the wheat that has been planted and is growing and we have nothing but field prep to do. Um, but we have several months ahead of us in order to uh, be able to afford to get all that done. Uh, planting season for soybeans and corn isn't until April. We are currently in October, so we've got plenty of time ahead of us to get all that prep work done. But I could do with earning a few quid. Dollars. Sorry, I couldn't I? <laughs> in the correct part of the world. Yeah, I could do with earning some money. Uh, so I had a quick look into the contracts menu, and sure enough, there was a handful of forest contracts. The one in particular that I have chosen is for Field 18, which is paying just over $80,000, which is excellent because we do currently need... We're not, we're not completely uh, dry of money, but we've only got uh, just over $30,000. So, yeah, we could do with earning something, as I do pay my workers now. Um, so, just over eighty grand, But that's before leasing the equipment. I have had to lease uh, because we don't have a forage harvester. Um, I've had to lease that. Plus a tractor and a trailer that came with it. Um, oh, sorry, not lease, but, you know, borrow the items from the contract. Uh, so, what I thought I would do, obviously, with having to borrow the, the items, I um, it comes with a tractor and trailer. Now, the field isn't absolutely massive, but it is kind of big. So, I figured what I would do, um, as I obviously do use a lot of uh, auto drive and course play, I figured we can use the items that we're borrowing. But we can also make use of our equipment as well to get the job done even slightly quicker. So, we've got the 9570 here. We're going to hook it up to our trailer. Assuming I can get the thing out of here. Should be able to. There we go. Because these things do have the rear wheel steer, don't they? So, that's all good. Right. Cows are okay. Nothing to report there. They're all good. Fine for food, etc, etc. I did toy with the idea of uh, using this one as well, getting three tractors and trailers in the field, but I think um, I am just going to do it with the with the two for now. This this is a, f a pickup wagon, the one you see attached to the New Holland there. Um, I think it might still work, but we'll try with the two anyway for now. So, the equipment is, the borrowed equipment is sat over at the dealership, so we're going to take a trundle over there, get everything picked up, make our way over to the field. The field is just down the road from the dealership and the point that we need to take the chaff to is actually the farmer's market that I placed down uh, as, a, as a custom sell point uh, when I started this map um, and I've played that's actually placed at the back of the uh, dealership there so I'll show you that when we get there but yeah see you in a few minutes when we're up there right here we are at the dealership there's the farmer's market that I placed down there. That's what we've got to take, uh, where we've got to take the goods to as we're harvesting it. Here is our borrowed Fent Katana forage harvester. Lovely big bit of kit. And the trailer and tractor that we've also got to run alongside it. Plus what we're in here. What is this one? New Holland T8. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So, this is what we've got to work with for the next couple of hours. Now, at the minute, it is 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um... I'm hoping we've got enough daylight to get this job done. As I say, the field isn't too big, but just running one harvester, it, it is still quite a big field. Um, so I'm going to judge how the time goes. I may well have to uh, slow down time to 0 0.5 speed, depending on where, we get, where we're at with daylight and how long, uh, once I get the course play course mapped in and uh, it tells me how long it's going to take, uh, I may well decide to put the time down to half just in case just so we don't run out of daylight, but nevertheless, let's get cracking. So we'll get everything over to the field. I shall see you in a moment or two. Right, there we go. Everything we need is over here at the field now. So this is field 18. It is pretty big it's quite small compared to some of the ones on this map if i pop into the pda this is us here so as you can see it's uh you know compared to compared to some of them like 42 down here and whatnot it's uh it's kind of medium size for the map i suppose but with one harvester at nine meters wide it's still going to take us 
quite a while, I think. Hence why I felt the need for the two trailers. So we'll see how this goes. I shall pop this all into uh, into a bit of a cinematic, as I like to do, as you know. And I'll catch you all when the job's done. And hopefully we're a little bit wealthier. So, see you in a bit. Right, there we go. Job completed. That didn't take about four and three quarter hours, honestly. <laughs> so absolutely, I have had to uh, stop time dead using Easy Dev just for the sake of getting this job done in daylight, as it were. Otherwise, most of that job would have been in complete darkness. So we've got the last of the trailer loads here. We've got about just over 35,000 litres of chaff in the trailer. The, the job is 100% completed, as you can see there. Uh, I've just sent the tractor and the harvester back to the dealership where we got them from. So we'll get this lot tipped. And I'll let you know where we stand financially once that's done. Right, that's the last of the chaff tipped. And from that lot we gained from the residual chaff at the end of the job. We got $2,632, so that's brilliant. I have just dropped the equipment back into the workshop there. But now, let's turn the contract in, shall we? So there, as you can see, the lease cost was 5,158. So we made back pretty much, give or take a bit, about 50% of that. So there we go, $75,438. Boom. Thank you very much. There we are. Now that's a bit of a healthier bank balance, isn't it? Just over a hundred thousand. That'll do for me. 
Right, so obviously, had I not had to stop time, we'd be well at well into the night time now, well into dark. So I'm going to get myself back to the farm and uh, wake up tomorrow. See what tomorrow brings. Morning, all. Welcome to November. Uh, nope. Now let's try again, shall we? Don't do rain. To wait for all that to stop. But I have just uh, been out in the workshop here for the last half an hour or so, just giving everything a good clean off. It does look better when it's clean, doesn't it? So there we go. Nice and shiny. Awesome stuff. Right. How can I get out of here? Jump over this here if I can. There we go. Right. So, even given the trailer a clean off on the uh, 9570. Still can't get out of there, can I? <laughs> right. So, what's going on now? Well, now the rain has stopped. And we're in the next month. As you can see, all of our harvested fields are pretty well uh, blessed with weeds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a start on the field prep. Now, the fields that we had soybeans in previously and the fields that we had corn for a bit of crop, for a bit of ground rotation, I'm uh, essentially going to swap them over. So the two fields that had corn in before are going to be planted with soybeans and vice versa. The soybean fields will have corn in. Uh, and as because of that, uh, because soybeans don't need the nitrogen, that the corn will need and the soybeans don't need any nitrogen essentially the way i'm going to do it is in the corn fields we'll be running the the tb60 and the anhydrous tank uh, and in the fields that we have the that i'm going to put soybeans in i'll just be running the tb60 so we'll just be cultivating it essentially and hopefully that task will rid ourselves of the weeds that are in there at the minute and i think for that job we will be running the 1167 I'm trying to think which ones to start off with first, to be honest. I think uh, I think we'll have a go with uh, with the full kit and caboodle, shall we? With the uh, with the full anhydrous toolbar. So let's get this thing disconnected for a start. There we go. Suppose we can get you dirty now. Now that you've been cleaned. <laughs> right. I'm going to hook ourselves up to all the equipment, get all this stuff done, and I'll see you in the first field. There we go, all hooked up. There's about 78% of uh, anhydrous in the tank, which should be enough, he says. But we're going to start in this one here, field 45. With it being, I think, the biggest of the three that we're going to have planted with corn, so... We'll get ourselves in here. Crack on, now it's a bit of a grey, gloomy day, isn't it? But uh, I'm going to try my best to, again, like I've just done, put this job into a bit of a cinematic. And see how we get on with it, so... Catch you ASAP. Jump into the car on a Friday night. I wanna drive with you. Looking for a bar in the nearest town. I've never seen a sky so blue. We don't ever play it in the night is young. It doesn't matter what we do. There ain't nobody like. There ain't nobody like. You look so beautiful. 
Right. Fertilising done, nitrogen levels brought up in this field, and a lovely bed of stubble tillage we have left. So, this is ready for a drilling come April time with a bit of corn, so that's going to be great. Now, I am. it always amazes me how far anhydrous goes in the fields in comparison to liquid fertiliser and uh, uh, normal fertiliser. It's uh, We've used, I think we've, we've used 20-something percent of this tank. So, uh, yeah it's awesome it really is but one thing i have just realized that needs to be done is the grass field now if we if i pop into the menu here let's have a look so the grass field here that we mowed a couple of episodes ago this is now on its way to growing again uh, but the nitrogen levels in here are pretty bad uh, the the ph values are fine i did run the lime spreader off camera a couple of episodes ago in between episodes um but yeah in order to get as good a yield as we can after that we need to run the uh, increase the nitrogen in this one now obviously i can't use this because it will just remove the grass i'm pretty sure but i'm pretty sure that i can put anhydrous into the crop sprayer so that's exactly what we're going to go and do now we'll get this back home i'm glad we have made a start on the field prep obviously we've got four fields left to do to get to this stage Two more of them with uh, the anhydrous tank and the anhydrous toolbar, but the other two that will be soybeans, as I said before, will be removing the tank and just running the TB60 as it is here. Right, so where is my crop spray is in there, so I don't want to get this in the way, so let's just pull this up, up to here for now. There we go. Right, Ooh, I think I've still got my, uh, my view distance set funny from my... Uh... There we go the cinematics right so this isn't going to cost us any money yet technically because we've got a big tank of anhydrous over here so let's bring up the menus now and i hope I should just be able to fill up no okay maybe if i t oh there we go there we go start filling right Anhydrous. There we go. Thank you very much. Right, so we'll get this thing filled up. This, is, this will take a... Oh, no, it's going up quite quickly. 27, 28, 29, 30. Righto. I am going to get this one done off camera, um, this field, but... I just thought I'd bring you with me to see if I, could, if I could get anhydrous into this thing, which I can. So hopefully... Now, I know, obviously, that the capacity of the tank on this thing is considerably smaller than the big thing we've been dragging behind us, but... I'm hoping it still should go relatively far, and it's only on grass as well, so... Fingers crossed it doesn't take too much. Now, one thing I always forget to do... Let's stretch out this, because these things always topple over. If you don't uh, stretch out those wheels and give it a much wider footprint, you have a very strong tendency to want to just topple over, and then you're stuck. Unless you've got super strength. <laughs> right. I'll see you over the field in a few seconds. Right, there we go. Let's get this thing done. Shouldn't take too long with a 40-odd metre, 120-foot uh, spread on this thing. So, I'll catch you when it's done. Right, job done. The grass is now topped up with nitrogen. Ready for the second cut when the uh, second growth stage appears. So that's excellent because we really do need to get on top of this. Or say get on top of it, we need to get as much of it on board as possible. Because uh, while that's been working away, I have just been checking on the numbers of everything now that we're in the next month in November. So if I pop into the animal menu there, as you can see, we have... Um, they're still they still got food, so um, but they do, they are going to need topping up. They are going to need some straw. Um, they haven't started producing milk yet because they I, th I think do they start producing at eighteen months? I think is that correct? I think that's what somebody told me in the last live stream. Um, now I am going to have to figure something out for the straw because at the minute, obviously, once they run out, I haven't got any more straw to give them. Um, now, if we have a look into our production system, uh, silage wise, we currently have over 1.1 million litres of silage and it is 
going up and up still. Uh, I think we've got this quantity to add to it. So that's all good. Uh, and obviously we'll start creating even more of it once we get this second cut of grass done that we've just uh, treated there. So that's looking good for the cows. Now financially, at the minute we have 200 cows and obviously the barn that we have uh, over here. In fact, we'll, we'll have a quick flick over. There we go. For those of you who haven't seen it, the vast cow barn that we have here, Legacy Ag's monoslope cow barn, I think the biggest in the game. Uh, we have 200 cows in here. Uh, and I very much would like at some point to get this maxed out to a thousand. Now I can't afford to buy them now uh, and even come January time when we can sell our dried corn. Uh, there's a handful of things that I'm looking to, to get hold of. Uh, one of them being a forage harvester because of the good money that you can get from the forage contracts. That, for example like the one we've just done today. Um, I think it would be a good idea for me to, to get hold of one of them and invest in one of those. Now obviously I am going to invest in a couple of hundred more cows at a time. <laughs> Look at them there. Goodness me. Yeah, there you go. Enjoying that, are you? Um, now, when I started this save, I kitted myself out with a couple of things that now I don't think I'm going to need. Uh, or one of them in particular is the manure spreader. Um, it's still got a bit of value in it. I am going to be keeping hold of the, uh, the slurry tank spreader thing. Uh, but this thing, the Roland manure spreader, I don't think I'm going to need. Now, currently in the in the in the game menu, it says it's got a value of just over 70 grand. So if I took that to the shop, I'll probably get a few more for that. So I think that is what I'm going to do. Um, I know I got it initially thinking I may I may use it, but now that I'm uh, thinking about where I'm going to go with it, uh, in respect of the manure and the slurry, uh, those of you who watch who've been watching my other series uh, down on Court Farms and the one I done. A few days ago on Zilonka, um, because I have now become a little bit more educated on the benefits of having a BGA on your farm or around your farm, because there is one on this map. Uh, I am going to place down a BGA again for the third in the third series on the run where I'm going to uh, do this, um, because I'm going to take advantage of the huge amounts of slurry and manure that we're going to get from this cow barn uh, and get uh, get earning from the electricity and the methane and produce digestate. Um, potentially so for the purposes of the digestate I'm going to uh, keep hold of the slurry tank and the spreader um, for now if it turns out that that's a bad idea and I don't need to then I'll you know I'll sell the tanker and the spreader but for now and, and obviously sell the digestate as well if once we start producing it in the B in, the, in a BGA that I place down uh, I am going to carry on using the mini BGA by disturbed simulations because it's a brilliant little thing and I do have I think I've got some space behind here to be able to place that down make use of this bit of land here so i may as well keep it close by haven't i so yeah that's kind of where we're going in the next couple of episodes now obviously like i said we've just done the grass so when that comes to second cut we'll be loading that up into the production systems here and getting a, a whole ton more total mixed ration produced um but i think very quickly now what i might just do now that we have finished spreading there I'm going to jump in a tractor and I'm going to whip that manure spreader down to the uh, shop and uh, get rid of it. We want to get as much money on board as possible. ASAP, because come January time... Now, this actually thinking about it, this was something that slipped my mind. Uh, now, there's a bit of a discrepancy here. So if I go into the time-saving stock check mod, as you can see there, dry corn, we have 1.349 thousand, a million litres of the stuff. And... It is telling me that the max price is at $1,504, which will be worth just over $2 million, which is brilliant. But if I pop into the, the main commodity prices, it says for dry corn, the price is at $771. Now that's pretty much half. So I'm either going to get just north of $2 million or just north of $1 million potentially for that quantity. So uh, I'm not going to be too sure what we're going to get from that until January, which is only a couple of months away. Um, but I'm not going to know which one of those two things is correct until I get to them. Until I get to it, so time will tell with that one. But uh, either way, if we make, if we, if we, if it is, if the time-saving stock check menu mod is correct, uh, and we get two million dollars or just north of for that dried corn, uh, then that is going to be seriously excellent. It means I am going to be able to purchase a good few more cows um, and invest in a bit more machinery, specifically the uh, forage harvester and a good big header. Um, if it's just the one million, I'll say just the one million, um, 
the dried corn then I am still going to invest in the forage harvester but it means I might have to just invest in less cows at a time um, and just essentially carry on with a few more contracts and earn a bit more money hope that by that point the uh, cows may have started producing a bit of milk and we'll start earning from that plus the BGA that we place down etc 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 you see where I'm going with this but hopefully because of the quantity of things that we'll have in the cow barn um, the money that we earn on an hourly basis from the BGA for example could be really really quite good but time will tell anyway right let's get back to the yard All right, there we go. All parked up. Excellent stuff. So, we have actually got quite a lot of work done today, considering in real life this episode, I think it's going to turn out to be some, some uh, mid-20 minutes long, perhaps. Um, it's taken me north of seven hours to put this one together with all the work that's been going on, the, the, the time it took for that forage harvester job to get done. Uh, etc 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 uh, so yeah i am uh, i'm going to call it here for the for today's episode ladies and gentlemen um, i do hope you've enjoyed it and found it even remotely fun and interesting as always if you're new to the channel you like my content you like the way i'm doing things please consider hitting that subscribe button and joining the channel jumping on board giving the video a like if you can because that do, does do wonders for the channel uh, and as always there are a host of links in the video description below with my giants partner promo code if any of you are in the market for a purchase for a DLC, an add-on, a season pass, or even the full game itself, and you like the idea of helping a content creator out at the same time, I would be massively appreciative. So thanks again, everyone. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time, and I shall see you in the next episode.